Hello everyone! Today I thought I would bring you a little collective haul of all the things that I've either bought or have been sent to me recently. There's a lot going on. This for sale is happening right now. So some of these I bought during this for sale, but not all of them. Some are just other purchases. I was just in New Orleans, so I have a few goodies from there, which is kind of cool. And I thought this would just be a good touch base video to let you know about this new stuff. And if I think it's full bottle worthy, would I repurchase it again? Would I purchase it in the first place? All of that. So let's get into it. I'm going to start with one of the fragrances that I was most anticipating and I ordered this before I left on my trip and so it was sitting here. I was waiting. I've gotten questions on it. This is from Sniff in collaboration with Alex L and it's called Heal the Way. The notes are what got me on this. Okay. Pistachio Cream, Divana, Palo Santo, Vanilla Absolute, Musk, and Amber. I mean, that sounds so good. It sounds so great. So I'm happy to report that I, love, I really love this. To me, that pistachio really comes through and it almost comes across um, like a cherry kind of note, like that cherry almond that you can get with pistachio. I'm definitely getting that, but there is this like creamy undertone to it, super vanillic. It's sweet, it's cozy, it's comforting. There are notes like Palo Santo in here, but I don't feel like they're taking over this fragrance. I think I think this definitely has like an edible quality, a foody quality to it. So if you're a gourmand girly, I think you're really gonna love this. It reminds me of scents similar, like the Sol de Janeiro, like main scent. This is kind of like that. Like if you like that, I think you might like this, but I feel like this is slightly more elevated, like those woodsy notes. I do feel like bring something just a little bit more grounding to me. I also feel like if you wanted something a little bit more edible from Yum Pistachio from Kaoli, I feel like this is giving it again the pistachio kind of creaminess that's coming from this as well as the vanilla just so good I'm very very happy with it I think a lot of people are gonna love this I also feel like if you liked crumb couture from them but you don't want something so foody so food realistic this also might be one you like because it still is sweet it still has those touches to it but it doesn't smell like bread like that literally smells like a croissant to me like the breadiness the butteriness the flakiness and you're not getting like a bread note from this so I I really love this. I think this is going to be such a hit. I feel like it was a great collaboration. The packaging was so pretty. It's very like positive. The inspiration, I wasn't familiar with Alex L before. So I think it's always cool when a collab, you know, introduces me to new people. So very excited for this. I do have a code with Sniff if you're interested in this. I think it might be sold out at the moment, but they might be doing pre-orders. It's just a good one. It's a really good one. One of my top from Sniff for sure, which let me know if you're interested in a Sniff video. I don't have every scent from them, but I do have quite the collection at this point so let me know if you'd be interested but this one is a winner in my book and when I ordered that I decided to try out some of their laundry stuff so this is the sweet ash liquid laundry detergent I've just really enjoyed lately having these kind of like elevated essentials when it comes to my laundry and sweet ash to me is like their version of a baccarat scent it just has I think it might have the saffron in it okay here are the notes on it no saffron <laughs> just kidding JK juniper berry bergamot fur balsam Tonka, vanilla bean, white moss, and patchouli. It's that sweet airiness. I really like the fur that's in here. I think it smells so good. And it's one of my favorite perfumes from them. So I thought I would give the laundry detergent a try in this scent. So I'll keep you posted on it. I think this is like a newer product from them. They started with fragrances, then they've done some candles. And I want to say this is like the next thing. So I will keep you posted on if this is good or not. Let's talk about a few PR items. I did get sent this from Twisted Lily. I'm an affiliate with them. So this is the new Julia Has a Gun fragrance called Juliet. I was intrigued because there is a cherry note in here and we've been seeing a big trend of cherry and fragrances so Oh my god, can I get the cap off? Hello. So I was excited to give this a try and also I do tend to like the Juliet Has a Gun DNA although I feel like they've been switching it up slightly. Like, I don't know. I think that the DNA of the house is changing a bit to me anyway. But for Juliet, this has a sour cherry note in the top. There's also something just kind of overall, uh, I don't know, fresh spicy going on in this fragrance to me. It almost smells kind of clean. I don't know. That's how I read this. I think there's pink pepper in here. There's jasmine, cashmere, and tonka bean. And I don't know. It comes across a little powdery it's not super sweet so if you don't want a syrupy kind of cherry note this might be something to check out I also just feel though in general it's pretty well blended like I can't pick up on a ton of specific notes like the pink pepper I'm like okay yeah I get like kind of a fresh spiciness maybe it's attributed to that the kind of powderiness I'm like okay maybe the tonka bean even the cherry that's in here I don't pick up on like such a specific cherry note at least to me I feel like it's again well blended and I think it just kind of smells right 
red. Like I'm not surprised the bottle's red or like there is a cherry note in it, but again, not picking it out specifically. I would say at this point, I still need to have more time with it, but I would say I like it. It's not a love for me. It's not a must have. This is more like a travel vial for me than it is a full bottle. I feel like the more it wears, the more I like it. It kind of calms down. It really wears nicely into the skin. And I feel like a lot of Julia has a gun fragrances do that. So if what I'm saying kind of seems like you, this might be one to check out. And if you're going to shop on Twisted Lily or you're shopping for anything niche, you can use my code over there. It saves you 10% and they do a lot of sampling as well. So if there are some niche fragrances that are kind of hard to find for you in your area, maybe you can't go sniff them in person. They do sampling over there and I feel like it's pretty reasonably priced and you can use that discount code there too. So, so far I like it and I like it a lot more than Less for Sun. You guys know I did not like that release, but I don't know if it's like completely me. I still like Lipstick Fever. You guys know I love Sunny Side Up. That's like my favorite. Those two have my heart for sure, but that doesn't mean I'm not into a cherry scent. And this is going to get us into a little bit more of like these travel vials because I am usually a full bottle bitch. Like I just like the look of bottles. I like having a big bottle. I like the collecting aspect, obviously the deal of it. You get a better price per like ounce when you buy bigger, but I have been trying to do more travel vials, especially for things coming out at Sephora, popular perfumes, flankers, all of that. So, okay, sorry, I got distracted. My husband just came home. So sorry if you can hear any noise. Sorry if the camera is different, whatever, who cares? Okay. Anyway, I was talking about travel size. I might've mentioned this in my Sephora, like new perfumes at Sephora because I definitely talked about some travel uh, sprays in there. But basically what I'm trying to say is that I really have been enjoying the travel sizes because it gives me the opportunity to really smell a perfume before I go in for that full bottle, especially with things that might not be love at first sniff. Some things are like that. Like you just know, okay? You just know it's the perfume for you. But there are a lot of perfumes that I just need a little bit more time to grow with and see if it's something that really works out. Sometimes that like love is a slow burn at the beginning. And I feel like the travel sizes really let me have that experience with it in different locations. If you're only smelling stuff in Sephora or in a department store, when you get out, just walk out of the doors. It smells different. Okay. <laughs> it really does. You guys are probably like, yeah, girl, we know, but I'm just saying for someone who I love a bottle, this felt like it was going to be hard for me, but I've really enjoyed it. And also for actual travel, like I just went on a trip and I brought, I kid you not. And I know you expect nothing less from me. I brought 25 or so travel perfumes. I like was like, you know, you can bring a lot as long as they're travel. As long as they're smaller size, like, you know, whatever fits in your girl, go for it. And it was so fun. I was like hoping in the back of my head, I was like, what if we have like a little fragrance smelling party at the house with the creators and friends? That is what happened. Anyway, it was a great time. I am so rambling. I'm so sorry. Let me get back to why I'm talking about this YSL Black Opium over red, okay? I know I talked about this in that Sephora video and I was like, it's okay, whatever. It's growing on me. It's really growing on me and when I think of cherry I think I prefer the cherry note in this as opposed to the Juliet one That's how I'm tying this together. That's the segue. That's where my brain was going. Okay I've really been enjoying this and you have to like the black opium DNA. I really feel like that comes through in here. And I actually pick up a lot on the coffee for some reason. And just the vanilla, it almost smells more similar to me to like the Le Parfum DNA than just straight up black opium. But then it has this cherry going on in it that to me smells like a cherry chapstick in a way, like the sweetest, yummiest cherry chapstick on top of black opium. And I don't know, man, it is good. It's growing on me. So glad to have a travel vial and this is one like if I went through this and this is a thing You might love a perfume. You might be like, oh, this is full bottle worthy, which I do I understand the hype, you know people loving this and it being sold out forever I get it But it's kind of nice to have enough to like use it and enjoy it And if it gets to the point where I use it up, I can just go buy a bottle then hopefully it's not gone at that point I don't know. Anyway, let's keep going. There's a lot more travel sizes next I did pick up the Valentino in a travel size This is the newest green stravaganza from the born in Rome line and I really love this one too. I believe like the main changes in this one are that it's like a tea kind of fragrance. So vanilla, jasmine, and tea in here. And there is something a little bit brighter, a little bit lifted. There's something a little bit green going on, but in such a great way. And the vanilla really comes through. Just a super likable fragrance to me. Like this just is likable. It's sweet. It's designer for sure, but like a designer scent I can get behind. And I have not loved all the other flankers. Like I do like Born in Roma. I think that is a really 
really great scent and I get why everyone loves that one, but the Coral Fantasy, the yellow one, even the Intense, they weren't really for me and I think this might be my favorite flanker and I might even in this moment like it more than the original. So this one, I don't know if I'll get a full bottle of it because you know, I have a million bottles. I got so much stuff going on, I really do, but I really, really like this and I think it's one to get your nose on. If I were to go through the travel size, I would potentially consider buying a bottle of this. Like I really do like this one. I think it's a really good release. I'm kind of shocked I'm saying that to be honest. I feel like I have a lot of good news at the beginning here, but I have some travel sizes that are not full bottle worthy to me. So we'll get to those. This from Brown Girl Jane, this is their newest release, Carnival. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. If you wanted mango scent, I think this one's so good. I thought I would like this because it was like mango whipped cream, something like that. I was like, Mango whipped cream, some woodsy notes, yes. You get this bright mango off the top that kind of dies down as you wear it and it just kind of gets creamy, still kind of fruity. It does go a little powdery as I'm wearing it, but I think it just smells so good. And if you guys ever smelled the Mango Beachwood candle from Bath and Body Works, this is giving me those vibes and I loved Mango Beachwood. I'm so sad, like why aren't <laughs> they need to bring that back? I feel like this is that scent and a little more creamy, which I am not mad at. So this is going to for sure be a full bottle. Like I already know. Like I said, sometimes when you know, you know, but I just didn't want to get the full bottle and be <laughs> sorry for it. So I will have it in a travel size. I will have it in the full bottle. Like I'm not waiting to finish this up. I will be getting the full bottle. I love it that much. Definitely one to maybe seek out if mango sounds good to you. Like I think this is a tropical like fruity scent, but again, it feels a little grounded. It's also some woody notes, which I really appreciate. And just to keep going for one more second, Brown Girl Jane is now sold at Sephora. So it might be a good time to try either the travel or the full bottle. I think it's only online at the moment because I did a lot of my shopping, actually all my shopping so far for the sale in person. So I wasn't able to get a bottle of this in person, but I will be placing an order for it. And let me know, I know the sale is coming to an end. It's gonna be ending, I think Sunday. So if you want me to get like a video with like my top 10 at Sephora for spring and summer maybe, or I was even thinking like top vanillas at Sephora before the sale ends, let me know. Because I was gone for the start of the sale, and all that it's just been kind of hard to like get my timing for videos up at the right time but let me know if you'd be interested in that i might try to squeeze it in before the end of the sale okay i'm so sorry for the rambles guys in this video i was looking at the notes because like what is in here but there is ginger and pimento and i think that is adding to this kind of spiciness powderiness i don't know that's how i sometimes pick up ginger and pimento like the way the ginger smells in goddess burberry goddess i feel like it has that kind of like I don't know, it's like a fuzzy powdery spiciness and I feel like I get that in the dry down of Carnival, but I really love it. I'm like really into that fragrance. Like I said, getting a full bottle. Okay, next, keep going. All right, you guys already knew I love this one. This is the Seven Virtues Amber Vanilla and I did get a full bottle of this again during the sale, so I am so excited. This is almost gone. Like I'm telling you, I'm here on the travel size of this fragrance. This is a great vanilla if you're looking for something that's not sweet. Like you're like, I want vanilla and I like vanilla, but I don't want it too sweet, especially for summer. If you're looking for like a skin scent, something similar to like Glossier You, I feel like even Dead Cool Milk, like in that family, but again, more vanilla focused without being sweet. I think you need to try this one out. I'm really into it. It's also pretty woody. I'm like spraying myself down today. It just reminds me of those kind of molecular skin scents with a vanilla twist on it. And I think it is so good. I'm also so happy with this one that it doesn't smell like spit on me because the other vanilla that they have, Vanilla Woods, I know a lot of people love it, but it just smells like spit on me. It's so weird. I hate it. I hate it. It smells like old, gross mouth. And I mean, I don't want to smell like that personally. I love this. I think if you like something like Sunny Side Up from Juliet Has a Gun, you might like this. Definitely a good one to check out. And I'm so excited to have the full bottle because I'm telling you, I was like running through this. Like this is almost gone. Definitely full bottle worthy for me. Running through these last four, I have Net Hair Jam. This one just came out from them. I was really excited about it. Not for me, let me just say, not for me. It's fruity, I think there's pear in here, it's called pear jam. I don't know, I can see people liking it, don't get me wrong, it's not like an unlikable fragrance, it's just not the one for me. There's pear in here, rose and patchouli, those are like the three notes that really like highlight on the Sephora site and I definitely pick up on the rose and the fruitiness of the pear, 
the patchouli kind of comes through. I feel like it just adds a power to this. Like this, I feel like would probably last well, especially if you, you know, sprayed a decent amount of it, but just not the one for me. And to be honest, I'm now it's coming back to me. Cause when I first got this, I was smelling it with my husband and I told him as he's smelling, I'm like, it kind of like, I hate to say this. I hate to say this because I want this to be so great, but there's something in the back of my smell when I smell this that smells like a dirty rag that like has mildew on it. Like there's something mildew-esque happening. Again, in the back of the sniff, and it's also like when I think that, I'm like, holy shit, it feels like right on. Uh, but I don't know if everyone's gonna smell that. Like I don't think people wearing this are gonna smell like mildew walking around, but I'm just saying it's hard to not smell that at the end. Like. Whew, yeah, I don't know. Not for me, obviously. Maybe I don't like this. Like, I, I think that don't get it, maybe. I don't know. Let me know. If you love this, tell me what you smell because obviously we all smell differently and I don't think any of you guys who like this are walking around being like, yeah, it smells like a mildew dish rag and I love it. <laughs> so tell me what you smell if you like this. Okay, next, another one. I don't think it's full bottle worthy and it's mostly just because this smell, I, you know, get one, get two. Okay, but... I'm just kind of over that coconut peachy sunscreen smell. Like there's so many of them out there. And yes, they're all different. And if it's your scent baby and you're like, no, that's my vanilla, okay? I love that for you and I'm glad you have options. This is Missy from By Rosie Jane if I didn't say that. And you know, this is a fun version of that sunscreen smell. It does remind me of Vacation's Vacation scent, like their sunscreen scent, and I love that. You guys know that, but I just feel like that's the one I'm gonna go for. Over this, this is pretty similar, and you know, I was excited. I felt like the pictures of this seemed fun. The notes on Sephora, green mandarin, coconut, pineapple. It's a fresh solar, and again, it really smells like Vacation. If you have that scent, I feel like you have something so similar, and you guys know I'm just so into that scent, especially with the sunscreen so I would just stick to that one not bad necessarily I know I kind of like I just feel like it gets hard in the summer when everything with a coconut note a pineapple note vanilla some florals in it I feel like it's probably gonna go like a singular direction and if you were hoping to smell like more of the pineapple I don't necessarily get that it's still kind of fun not as powdery not as maybe floral heavy as some others but I say go with vacation okay this one I just was you know browsing on Sephora like I do and this is from Pro it's the Infusion de Vanilla. I don't know if this is brand new or just new to the Sephora site, but I love a vanilla, so I was like, okay, Prada, let's see. And this is nice. I think people who don't, again, want the sweetest vanilla in the world, which I can't relate. Like, I love a cupcakey vanilla, a icing vanilla, a sweet, yummy, gourmand, edible vanilla. Like, that is the shit I like. But if you don't and you're like, no, I like something a little more powdery, I like something that's vanilla without that, this is like a non-edible vanilla to me, it almost comes across a little baby wipe, like a little bit of a cleaner vanilla. And although it's not the vanilla for me, I know that we're all different and someone might like this vanilla. So I don't think that it shouldn't exist or something, but not full bottle worthy for me. Don't be fooled by the vanilla if you're a vanilla girl. <laughs> This probably isn't the vanilla for you. It's just a softer take when it comes to sweetness and all of that. Again, a little more powdery. I do feel like it's feminine, but I want just a little more. I need a little more sweetness than this gives. And last with these kind of small sizes, this is Puriet Evening Glass. And this I think is their second scent. Their first one is kind of that beachy coconut floral thing. And this also is coconut, but it's kind of the deeper version. It is a roll on oil. I think this is the only way they sell this at the moment. And I do like this I don't love it I don't think it's a must-have it almost comes across a little almondy to me it has a nice sweetness to it I think a lot of people would enjoy it it's cozy it has a warmth to it which is nice some of the notes on this this is supposed to be a seductive elevated version of their other scent so we have dark coconut warm wood smoky vanilla and ocean salt I do feel like that's a great description of it especially compared to the original that one smells like cleaner and it does smell like day this does give me more almost like a nighttime sexy vibe but still very surfy and very beachy at the same time so I don't know I like it I'm not obsessed with it I'm not in love with it but I'm glad I got to try it if I smelled this in store I don't know if it would have pushed me over the edge to buy it though I bought this online you can get it at Ulta and they have other stuff from Pirate, Pirate. I don't know how to say the brand actually. So not quite full bottle worthy for me, but still a good scent. I do like it. There's some stuff there. I bought all that stuff. Hopefully that's helpful if you were looking at any of those because I feel like some of those are newer fragrances. Next, this was PR. I got this in like a goodie bag. I went to an event and it's from Clean Reserve. It's part of their H2O line, which is their new line. And this is Musk Noir. I was excited to try this. And this smells okay. 
I think it's different than their other stuff from this line, but to be honest, I don't know. I've smelled more of this line in store. There's like a marigold one, I wanna say. I don't know, something with like yellow flowers. <laughs> There's a few different ones and I'm just not impressed. I do not think this is full bottle worthy. I would not spend the money on this fragrance. I feel like it's pretty late. Some of the notes on this, there's violet, lily, orange blossom, lots of florals, and then there's musk, sandalwood, vanilla, patchouli in the base, a little bit of mandarin orange. I don't know. I just think it's like unremarkable, totally not special. And I know they came out with so many in the H2O line. And I don't know, I just felt like all of them to me, nothing stood out. I really wanted something like skin or a really great vanilla. Even their sparkling sugar scent, I just felt like it was kind of similar to the Radiant Nectar, which even that DNA isn't as much of me anymore. So I don't know. I was hopeful I would like it, but it's not my favorite personally. I think this is the last PR item and this is from Skylar. They came out with a body spray version of Boardwalk Delight, which you guys know is one of my favorites and Body Mist are all the rage. They are so popular. And for the other ones that came out, they have the vanilla, the coconut cove, and they also have, I think, peach fields. I think those are the three they had and then they added this, so fourth body spray. And for those ones, I kind of felt like go with the perfume if you're gonna do it, like find out a good deal and just go with the fragrance that's gonna last a little bit longer which is gonna be perfume body mist tend to not but there's something about this you guys know I'm obsessed with the scent I love this I got this in the scent club I like do their monthly scent club so I got it before it became a bottle I was so excited they were gonna release it as a bottle and there's something about this in the mist that I think works and I do think is slightly different I don't know I don't know maybe I'm just obsessed with this scent but I just think if you want something a little bit more lightweight this can be really sweet this can be kind of a lot and I think for summer it's just such a fun way to wear this scent and it to be like really easy breezy low-key I mean as much as these are kind of expensive for body mist it's $30 for 2.7 fluid ounces I mean that's a lot of money but I will say this one I do think is worth it out of the four like I don't know if the other ones would be but this one is so good and it works for me and what I like to use body mist for I tend to wear them more for like around the house as transition scents I really love them at night after a shower Hour, so I feel like this totally fits that for me. I like this one. I think this one is worth it in the body mist. So I love it. It's so good. And if you don't know the notes on this pure vanilla, cotton candy, coconut milk, like super sweet, kind of fresh smelling at the same time. Like there is something a little bit soapy going on, but it's vanilla. It's a little milky. It has that cotton candy, airy kind of sugariness. So good. I love it. Super girly, super fun, full bottle worthy. I have it in the perfume. I have it in the rollerball. I have it in the body spray and I love all of them. All right, continuing on, I did get sucked into uh, Victoria's Secret. There's always one, always one comes through and this one is the Sunset Gelato. The Pistachio Gelato Caramel Drizzle and Sea Salt got me like those notes. I was like, I wanna smell it. And this really is so similar to the Sol de Janeiro scent. It's different, it's different but you can tell that was the vibe they were going for. I almost feel like the salt comes through a little bit more on this, to be honest. Like, I don't know, I can kind of get that, but I just don't think you necessarily need both, okay? I love this old de Janeiro caramel pistachio scent, so good. And this is a nice alternative, or maybe this like is that tiny bit different. I just feel like the sprayer is better on that though. I do not like the sprayers necessarily for the Victoria's Secret. I know you can get them very cheap though. They can be a good deal, so I get it, I get it. And you can get the matching body care and all that, but I just, I'm like, come on, that sprayer is so weak. Anyway, pretty good. I feel like, you know, if you want a pistachio scent, you want a Sol de Janeiro dupe, this might be an option for you. But if you were like, is it different? I feel like they're pretty similar. Like similar enough for me that I don't feel like I would need both. Even though obviously I have both now. <laughs> I can't complain. I love testing all this shit. Like this is my dream job, literally, literally. Um, This haul is pretty collective. I feel like like <laughs> there's a lot of time spanning between all these, but I do have a niche perfume in here. There's a new perfume shop in LA. It is called Scent the Scent room I want to say I think it started in Texas maybe Dallas and I followed them on Instagram and I was on Larchmont Street and I was like oh my gosh they have a scent room here didn't realize everyone in there is so nice so sweet so anyway I was in there and this was a love at first sniff I didn't know the notes I just was sniffing around and one of the sales associates directed me to this this is from Byron perfumes it's the chronic and I think it's the rouge version of it it doesn't really say that on here but I'm pretty sure 
It's like the rouge version of the chronic. Mmm, I just love this. It's almost like fruity gum in a way. I definitely could see something like that. Very similar in a lot of ways to the Minnie Mouse scent from House of Siage. If you love that, but maybe it's too sweet, this to me is the toned down like in-between version of the Minnie Mouse perfume from House of Siage and like Burberry Her. You know what I mean? Or even Fleur Strawberry Letter, which I have a strawberry video that I did film, so like, just so you know, that might be coming. But I, when I was <laughs> looking back at the footage, this is just like, you know, sometimes the reality, I was just like, I feel like, I don't know if I like how I look in this, but I don't know. I haven't looked at the footage in a while, so maybe I'll be okay with it now. Anyway, I feel like this is a, a in-between of all that. So it's like sweeter to me than Strawberry Letter is. I feel like it has more of a fruitiness and a sweetness that I enjoy, but it's also not as sweet, like off the charts sweet as I feel like the Minnie Mouse fragrances. So this might be one to check out if you're like in line with any of those. As this dries down, I feel like the musks, and also I do think there's patchouli in the base of this, comes out a little bit more powdery, but I feel like it has some nice lasting power. Like, I don't know, I really like it. The sweetness kind of dies down as you wear it, but I really enjoy this. There's almost something kind of whipped cream going on to me as well. This just had to come up with me. I'm looking at the notes now because I could not remember all of them, but raspberry whipped cream, really smell those. There's also melon and pear in here, and I do not feel like those overtake in any way that make this seem melony, but obviously I really like this fragrance and I feel like the fruity sweetness that's coming off is this perfect balance for me where it's not too much, but it's definitely there. There's amber spicy notes and cinnamon in the mid, and then sandalwood, white musk, and patchouli, and I feel like you do get some of that warmth and spiciness, but nothing too overpowering. I feel like it really just balances this fragrance and makes it, you know, niche. Like it's niche, but still very likable. It just kind of grounds it. So really enjoying that. And it's always fun when you go in and you're just kind of sniffing around and you don't know notes. It's always fun to me to kind of like look back later and be like, okay, what is in here though? <laughs> like what is making this smell? Why do I like it? What do I like about it? And it's always cool when it's things that maybe by note, I don't know if this would have stood out to me, but again, in store in the moment, this really caught my eye, caught my nose. And and I've really enjoyed having it to my collection. It's also the first fragrance from Byron Perfume, so I definitely need to check out the house more. Okay, I am trying to wrap it up, guys. I know this haul is getting a little long. For a few more body mists, though, I did decide to buy all the new ones from Salt and Stone. This brand is now sold at Sephora. I talked about this on my beauty channel in my Sephora sale video, so if you've watched that, sorry if this is a little repetitive, but I did want to mention them here. There are three new scents. This one is Bergamot and Hinoki. This is my favorite one. It is very fresh, it's woody and citrusy in a way that does have a bit of a soapy quality to it, a bit of a clean quality to it, but I just love it. It's so refreshing, perfect for spring, summer, hot weather. These all have kind of a spa vibe, an elevated vibe, especially for a body mist. I feel like a lot of body mists can go a little juvenile or can just be sweet or foody, edible scents, fruity scents. And if you're looking for something more spa-like, again, something with more woody tones or woody notes to it, I think these these might be some options for you. And I also really like the bottle. They just feel nice. They're glass, like they're nice. So the Hinoki one is my favorite, but there's also Black Rose and Oud. This one, if you're looking for something kind of sexy, kind of sensual in a body mist, definitely picking up on like a woodiness with a rose. I don't know if I would call it Oud. It's not like a scary Oud fragrance, but it definitely has some depth, maybe a little bit of spice to it as well. I get something kind of sexy and feminine and a little bit darker than what you you might expect in a body mist, but I still think it's like wearable. It's not like a nighttime fragrance, but it just has a little more depth to it. I don't know. I really like this one as well. Not my normal personal style, I would say, but I really enjoy it more than I expect considering that. And then last year, Santal and Vetiver. To me, this is a Santal 33 dupe from Le Labo. So if you're really into that, yeah, this smells like Santal 33 to me, like pretty spot on, but in a body mist. So if you're looking for something maybe a little more inexpensive, obviously Le Labo is very expensive, or you like the idea of a body mist version, you don't want something too strong, this might be one to check out, but I feel like they're all really nice. You need to be more into like an earthy spa-like scent, but if you're looking for that in a body mist, I feel like they're doing something that not a lot of other body mists are doing, which I really appreciate. I don't regret picking up any of them. I'm glad I have all of them to be honest, but again, Hinoki and Bergamot, 
kept that's my favorite one these were also in my sale video but these were in the like don't buy and i just wanted to bring them up so fast from josie Marin. these are body scrubs and i just know if you're into the body care stuff like i am like the scent all of that layering it with your perfumes everything showers you know what i'm talking about um i just would say stay away from these or smell them in person i did go to a sephora store and they had them and i'm telling you they smell the same way these just have a stink to them they smell like vinegar or just kind of stinky like they smell like i don't know i don't like them i do not like them so i got vanilla vibes and bohemian fig the scrub itself is nice so maybe the unscented one would be nice they do leave a little bit of like that moisturizing oil which i totally expect coming from the josie Marin line like argan oil is their thing so the scrub itself is nice you know the packaging is nice this is like a glass bottle and they sell refills but the smell i'm like did anyone smell these did anyone smell these? Who approved these? Don't suggest not full bottle worthy. Literally don't do it. I really don't suggest them. Oh my gosh, I'm so sad I almost missed this. Like let's add a little bit more to the haul. I'm probably gonna just like stick this in for more chaotic energy. But I wanted to shout this product out from Lush. It's the Yummy Custard Body Wash. I think it's a more recent release. They said it was like Mother's Day. And if you're into Lush Yognog, like you know I am. I love Yognog. It's this super sweet custardy creamy scent that I feel like is pretty unique. If you're into that, this smells just like Yaganog to me. Mm, it's so creamy. Again, kind of has that like custardy kind of smell to it. And I really have enjoyed it. It's kind of a different consistency though. It's almost like its own kind of custard, but it smells so good. And again, if you're into Yaganog, this is one to definitely check out. And it really does last on your body as well. I showered with this and the next day I could still smell it on my skin. Like the actual body wash itself is very strong. So just wanted to shower. Out this baby out. All right, last couple of things I wanted to mention are actually things that kind of relate to my New Orleans trip. So for the Creators and Friends trip specifically, we had a secret sister gift that we had to give. So who got me was Leah Janae. If you guys don't know her, she has a beauty channel. She does a lot of fragrance stuff. Definitely go check out her channel, especially if you like sweet stuff, Bath and Body Works stuff, vanillas, like she loves that type of stuff too. And she was my secret sister. So she got me a gift and I totally knew it was her. I totally guessed her out of the 40 people that it was that it could have been uh, because she just knew what to get me. I felt just so grateful. She did such a good job. So she got me two different body mists. These are both from Dirty Soul Soap Co. I have banana milk here. This one, it smells so good. Definitely banana milk, but also I get a little bit of spice from it as well. So I almost feel like it could be banana bread with like melted ice cream a little bit. I don't know. So good. I just love anything banana. And then also marshmallow treat. The marshmallow isn't as sweet as I thought it was gonna be. Also, it just burned my nose so bad. I don't know why, but I really want to test this on the skin longer and see how I like it. She also got me a body scrub. This one's pomegranate and fig from the brand Onyx. And then the one I'm so excited for, and I absolutely love, this is vanilla potion. I think you can get this at like TJ Maxx, I want to say. It's a very affordable vanilla, but this is such a good, just everyday, kind of musky skin scent vanilla. Oh yeah, I love this, especially again, I'm pretty sure this is so affordable. So if you see this, it's for sure worth the pickup. I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of because it's a very, it's like a sugary sweet vanilla without being too much. Like it's not overly sugary. It's not like pink sugar or anything like that. Mm, it's so good. It kind of reminds me maybe a little bit of mod vanilla. You guys know I'm obsessed with mod vanilla from Ariana Grande. So if you're into those vibes and you see this, definitely worth the pickup. So happy she gifted this to me and I just appreciate her gift so much. And it was just so cool that she got me because you know, we just get each other with the scents. You know what I'm saying? So definitely go check her channel out if you guys haven't seen her. I know you'll love her channel. And last, I know you're like, is it gonna end i don't know maybe <laughs> when i was in new orleans they had a few different perfume shops there um they had some that just sold some niche perfumes it was kind of hard though like the hours were definitely different but if you're going to be in new orleans it might be worth it to look up some perfume shops because they have some that are also a little bit more like old school like they've been there a long time they're making their perfumes some oils and then they also have a store called tihon i think it's tihon but what's so cool is you can sign up for a class to make your own perfume so that's what me and my husband did it was definitely a fun experience it was just a fun activity a little peek behind the curtain of what noses do and like honestly mad respect because it's hard it's so hard you can have this idea of what you want but trying to find all the right notes and 
you know, making the combinations can be difficult. So I made one I called French Marshmallow and it's a lavender vanilla kind of scent. I knew I wanted something vanilla because hello, I was like, if I'm gonna wear this, it's gotta be vanilla, let's be real. And I'm pretty happy with it overall. It has that like um, really nice aromatic lavender to it, which I really love, but it's still sweet. So that's kind of fun. And then Sam called his Le Fricozoid. <laughs> It's a little tougher from, I think there's like oud, bergamot. More than anything, it was a fun experience. I'm not saying our fragrances are like top notch, everyone needs to buy them, but it was definitely fun to do the oils and just have this tiny, tiny taste of what it's like creating perfumes. And I'm glad I did it. So I just wanted to bring it up in here in case that was something you were interested in and something that I did in New Orleans. So now I'm gonna end the haul here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you've picked up. If you have any thoughts on these fragrances, let me know. If you're into Pear Jam, let me know. If you wanna see a Sephora video, before the Sephora sale ends. I can try to do that, but I wanna hear from you guys. And yeah, I think the strawberry video should be next, hopefully. Hopefully I am okay with that footage, but I'm gonna end it here. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.